Tell everybody, everyone we know, we ain't got time for that today. What's going on guys, this is Kazi. Welcome to another epic video. This time I'm gonna be showing you how to create a VHS look. I made a post on Instagram and it blew up. Everybody was going crazy. How did you do it? So this is exactly what we're gonna find out in this particular video. It's a pretty cool effect, mostly used in music videos, sometimes documentaries. Good to know how to do it properly. If you don't know the difference between parallel mixer and layer mixer or not sure when to use which, you came to the right place. In this free training, you're not only gonna learn everything about nodes, you will also learn to build the perfect node tree regardless of the project that you're working on. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. Let's roll the intro. All right, let's get this show on the road. I'm so excited to be doing this because a couple of things that are happening here, right? First of all, we have a Rec 709 image. We don't have a log image, which makes things a little bit more challenging, which is great. So you see the highlights here are almost clipping. So once we start treating this, it's going to get out of control and we're going to have to find a way to bring it back and still achieve what we're going for. So what I'm going to do is start off by building a node tree as we usually do. So the first node is going to be for my highlights. Then I'm going to create a new node. I'm going to call this primaries. And then I'm going to create another one. And this is going to be our color space transform. I'm going to create another one. This is going to be my LUT. I'm going to create another one. This one I'm going to call it film damage. And then we're going to create another one. And this is where we're going to apply the VHS effect. And then I'm going to just have another one to be on the safe side. I'm going to call it global adjustment. So let's do this. I'm going to take this, bring this down here. You know what? I'm going to bring this down here and uh, let's bring that over here. And then uh, our effects are going to go down here. And it's basically a three row node tree. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my LUTs and uh, let's go in here. And uh, this is the one that I want to use. Okay. So it is the Fujifilm 3513. DI D55. Okay, so let's apply it. And uh, it looks really weird. That's okay, because we're going to go in this node, we're going to open up our effects. And what I want to do here is I want to find my CST right here, color space transform, drop that in. And in the last one where it says output gamma, let's hit C and find Cineon film log. And then all of a sudden, it opens back up. So if I do before and after super crushed opens it up and it's still really blown out. Everything is looking kind of crazy. So let's control that. So I'm going to take my gain and I'm going to bring it down. Not too much. I'm going to bring it down somewhere around here. I'm going to leave it right there. So still kind of in your face and uh, that's okay. And another thing that I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to go back to my highlights node and just what we usually do, I'm going to go ahead and use my low soft to around seven, eight ish. I'm going to hit shift H so I can see what I'm selecting. I'm going to go ahead and select just the highlighted area, something like that. I'm going to jump back out. I'm going to take my gain. I'm going to pull it down and you can see the effects right here. It was right there before and I brought it down kind of have a little bit more control and you can see the highlights are being recovered beautifully. Okay. So, so far so good. I'm going to jump on to my node number five film damage and let's drag this all the way down and uh, under resolve effects texture, that's where our effects are that we're going to be using. So the first one I'm going to drop on is going to be film damage. And once you drop it on, it does too much and that's just unrealistic. Uh, the reason why I'm using this, let's just go ahead and turn these off, first of all, and take the dirt density all the way back. So now we don't have scratches, we don't have dirt, uh, because really I'm using this to dirty up my image, nothing else. Um, okay. And then I'm going to go under my modes. Let's go back in here. And what I want to do is I want to dial back on the film blur. I don't want it that much. So we're going to keep it somewhere around here. And then most importantly, I'm going to take my temp shift and I'm going to bring back some of that color that we had. 
So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. So if I do before and after, uh, we can see that it's adding the vignette, which is very important because we got to dirty up the image. Back in the 80s or 90s, the look that we're going for with the VHS, it wasn't shot with like these high-end Alexa or RED cameras where the lenses would cover 4K or 6K image. So we got to keep that in mind. And film damage is getting us in that world effortlessly, okay? Now, we're basically just done with the film damage at this point. And now I'm going to go ahead and drop on analog damage. And as soon as you do that, boom, you would think, okay, this is the look. I'm done. Print it. And you can if you want to. But in my case, I like to preserve taste and not make it look so cheesy. You know, in my head, I'm thinking, remember the flashback sequences from Mr. Robot? That's what I'm thinking. So if we're going to be creating something like that, I'm going to go ahead and select 1990s. And as soon as you do that, it gives you a pretty decent image and it's very believable. But now we went too far. So it's not pushed enough. Before it was too pushed. Now it's not pushed enough. So go ahead and play around with some of these, right? So I'm going to go under my color dials. I'm going to take my color slider right here and I'm going to start cranking it and then kind of dial it back. So to keep it somewhere around here. And now if I look at... If I do before and after, just between these, we can see that we were able to add a lot of color. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. Now, one thing that's happening that you can see in our scope is that there's way too much green in our shadows. And dirtying up your shadows is not necessarily a bad thing, but here too much of it is happening. What can we do to fix this? And one way to do that is go under your log wheels shadow and then just start taking some of that green out of the blacks. And even if I park somewhere around here, we can clearly see how much of that gunky green right here we were able to pull out. And just look how nice the skin looks all of a sudden. And the colors are looking much, much better. Now, one thing we can do is just go under our low range and try to control it and see how much we want to affect. So really, I just want to affect the bottom end. I don't want to affect anything else. And let's go and uh, clean it up a little bit more. So even something like that. And if I do before and after, you can see the difference is pretty massive. And especially in this area, you get to see the difference uh, a lot more. So for me, this is a pretty clean version of a VHS look. And one thing that I see is that my highlights are blown out again. So pretty simple fix. We already have a highlight node. I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to go back to my lift gamma gain. I'm going to take my gain. I'm going to pull it down and boom, just like that. We are able to recover our highlights again. So this is before this is after. Now, one thing that we can do is if you look at the vector scope, it is very much on this green side. And if you want to balance it out a little bit, I would go under my primaries. I would take my offset, which would be my printer lights, and I would start subtracting some of it out. Right. So I'm going to bring it somewhere around here and. Let's see. Maybe we can leave it somewhere like this. And if we go before we started making these changes to after, you can see it's a pretty big difference and it has that natural look. And we can see that, you know, we balanced it out quite a bit. So it still has that natural look, yet it is very stylized with that VHS effect. So now, I'm going to save this version and I'm going to show you some cool uh, presets here that you can use as a starting point. So remember, this was our default. If I click right here and if we're going for a specific look, let's just say if you're going for a old VHS look or if you're going for a clean VHS look, uh, but you go, you know what? I don't want, want these, you know, banding or like pillar boxing. How can I get rid of that? So you can do it. Let me just give you some extreme examples. So let's go to this one. And you're trying to create 60s look, but you don't want this cheesy TV effect. How can you get rid of it? Just click on TV construction and click on edge alpha mask and boom, that just gets rid of it. Now you can just move on and mess around with other parameters and just go from there. 
So that's just to give you a quick example of like all the control that you have here. Obviously, you can play around with it more and uh, just, you know, experiment with it as much as you can. What we can do is let's grab all of this, kill it, and then just go from where we started to where we ended up. So first step was our LUT that is a Fujifilm LUT. And then I converted it properly so we can see all the detail in our image. I went and did my primaries, then did some highlight recovery. And uh, then we applied the film damage effect just to kind of dirty up the image a little bit to get it primed for VHS. And then we applied the VHS OFX and then modified it as much as possible. And then finally, I used my shadows in my log wheels to kind of do a proper black points. They're still not 100% proper, but it's a big difference. And I want to leave it dirty a little bit on the lower end because that's what really adds to the drama of this VHS look. So this is what we got. Let's check out the final look in full screen. Tell everybody, everyone we know, we ain't got time for that today. So as you can see, there's so many different ways to go about creating this look. You can be on a very extreme side or you can do what we did here. Keep it tasteful if you like. If you have any content suggestions, drop them down below. Do not forget to check out the one hour long free training. Link is down below. And if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video.